everybody has dreams. These dreams can be basic and easily achievable. Others can be very difficult to make happen. Some can be very concrete and precise where every tiny detail is envisaged. And some are very abstract or unclear and could hardly be implemented in the near future. What we need is the ideal final result. Trying to achieve our dreams or even our simplest goals, we may run into various obstacles. Some obstacles may be small and well known. Some act as resources and some are very costly to overcome. Some are physical and others are virtual. These obstacles are known as problems. Any person, company, society or system, and even civilization itself, sooner or later faces some problems. In fact, our whole lives are sequences of problems and their resolutions. The solution to any problem can be partial, temporary, complex, cumbersome, and at times even dangerous. The solution itself may be a cause of further problems. Today, these machines may look awkward and amusing. The solutions were a good idea at the time, but they have now ceased to exist because they were far from ideal. Let's take a look at the humble potato masher. This one is ergonomically designed. The handle is at right angles to the masher, making it comfortable to use. This one is not ideal. And this one looks like it's going to be pretty painful to use. As Henry's mashing the potatoes, it's clear to see that not only is his hand slipping up and down the handle, but also when he applies pressure, the handle is digging into the palm of his hand. Not good at all. However, with this one, not only is it comfortable to use, but he's also able to put his full weight behind it, so we'll get the potatoes mashed much quicker. If I was to buy a potato masher, I'd definitely go for that one. Good work. On the other hand, a strong solution which radically solves a problem on a win-win balance often solves a conflict at the most profound level, whether it's simple, elegant or even free of charge. In order to achieve the best solution, we must first formulate our ideal final result. If we do not set our goals clearly and precisely, we will never achieve them. If we don't know which direction to go in, we will never reach our final destination. In this film, we will provide you with a definition of the ideal final result. We will tell you how to define it correctly and how to get to it with minimum effort, time and other resources involved. Let's take a look at some concrete examples. A car. What would an ideal car look like? First of all, we need to ask, is it a car for a single person or is it for a family of five? Is it for a prosperous young man? Or is it for an engine manufacturer, or maybe even a tyre manufacturer? And from the engineering and technological point of view, any ideal machine or device should occupy minimum space, have minimum mass or weight, and consume minimum energy. It should not require spare parts or maintenance, must be instantly available and cause no side effects or harm and its useful function must be performed to its maximum capacity. Actually, very often we can say that we do not need a machine, but we need only its function. But do such machines exist? We can now summarise these examples and extract the main conclusions. Very often we can achieve impressive results and win-win solutions if we do not solve the problem as such, avoid it, make it happen in a controllable mode, delegate the problem to somebody else, wait until the problem solves itself or disappears, regroup parts of our system in space and time, or even find benefits in the negative sides of the problem. You have seen that we often need only function, not a system, machine or device that performs it. This trend is implemented when we want to order a service. 
But more often than not, we actually need the result of the function rather than the function itself. Also happening are things which are undesirable. We are in need of an impression of a process or a result. Let's take a look at this castle. At first glance, it looks like an ordinary castle, but in fact, it is a sham castle, built to look like a castle, but without any of the function of a real castle. These camo trousers are the same. They're coloured in a way so that I can't be noticed in the forest during a combat. But unless I'm planning to wage war, which I'm not, they are unnecessarily baggy and seem to have an awful lot of pockets which I don't really need. So why are they produced in the first place? because they look like they're designed to do something highly adventurous and people want to have that feeling when they wear them. So, before solving any problem, ask yourself the following questions. Is it a real problem? Is it your problem? Should we be struggling with it or can a more elegant solution be found? Analysis and diagnostics of the problem is a theme of our next film.